Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So today we are going to talk about plate heat exchangers. Yes, once again a technical topic after many weeks. Along with chill and tube heat exchangers, plate heat exchangers is one of the most extensively used heat exchangers in the industry. And why this practice, the regular practice of using plate heat exchangers is so common in the industry, we are going to talk about that. Why is plate heat exchangers preferred over other heat exchangers? What is the working principle of a plate heat exchanger? What are the constructional features of a plate heat exchanger? How does a plate heat exchanger actually work? And what are the perks of a plate heat exchanger? We are going to talk all about that in this video. So watch this video till the very end. Moreover, at the end, right after understanding the working principle of the plate heat exchangers, we are going to talk about an industrial problem related to plate heat exchangers, like we have a series of video on industrial problems. So once again, I'm going to discuss about an industrial problem that I have recently faced regarding plate heat exchangers and the understanding from the same. Uh, so let us go straight away to the topic of uh, plate heat exchangers. If you haven't watched our video on heat exchangers, all the details pertaining to heat exchanger has been already provided in a video titled heat exchangers. All you need to know about it. Just refer to that video in our uh, list of video section. Uh, other than that, to be specific, we are going to talk about plate heat exchangers too. So going straight away to the topic, why is plate heat exchanger preferred over other heat exchangers in the industry? The most prolific uh, advantage of plate heat exchangers over other heat exchangers is its variable area. I have particularly marked this because this is a, a major advantage of plate heat exchangers over other heat exchangers. Now, uh, if we consider any heat exchanger, be it of the recuperative type, be it of the regenerative type, any type of heat exchanger, if you consider in the industry, if we need to decrease the heat transfer or increase the heat transfer by changing certain conditions, the most important condition being the heat transfer area. If we need to change the heat transfer area of a heat exchanger, the constructional features has to be changed. This, the constructional features has to be uh, transformed in order to change the heat transfer area of a heat exchanger. Consider the case of a shell and tube heat exchanger. The uh, number of tubes uh, may have to be changed. The overall diameter of the tubes may have to be changed to change the overall heat transfer area. But here in plate heat exchangers, nothing other than the number of plates has to be changed. If we decrease the total number of plates that are kept in a plate heat exchanger, if we decrease the number of plates and uh, do it like uh, make the heat exchanger run with lesser number of plates, the variable area will automatically decrease. So the area is easily variable. It is easily variable and it is straight away we are understanding that there is a relation between the area and the number of plates. The number of plates, when we decrease the number of plates, number of plates decreased means area also decreases, heat transfer area also decreases and overall heat transfer as a result of that decreases. So if we need to decrease or increase the heat transfer through a plate heat exchanger, it's very easy by simply changing the area of the heat uh, exchanger by decreasing or increasing the number of plates, by changing the number of plates in the heat exchanger. So it's an easy process and that's why plate heat exchangers are preferred over other heat exchangers. Now coming to the working principle of a plate heat exchanger, as the name suggests, in this heat exchanger there is a series of plates but this series of plates has alternative flows of hot and cold fluid. What do I mean by alternative flows of hot and cold fluid? I mean by this that supposedly this is my plate number one, this is my plate number two, this is my plate number three and this is my plate number four. Now when I jam pack them, like uh, put them into a stack, into a bunch and fix them, tighten them. So what happens is the arrangement is such that the hot fluid or the cold fluid, any one of the fluids flow in between one and two and the other fluid doesn't flow in between one and two. Let us for the moment consider the hot fluid flows in between one and two. Let us for the moment consider hot fluid flows in between one and two. Now, supposedly the hot fluid is flowing in between one and two, which means in between these two plates, the hot fluid is circulating. Now, in between two and three, the hot the arrangement is such that the hot fluid won't circulate. Now, uh, we will discuss about the arrangement, how it is done. We are going to discuss about the constructional features. But let us first understand the concept. Between two and three, only cold fluid will flow. Only cold fluid will flow. So, in between one and two, hot fluid will flow. In between two and three, cold fluid will flow. Again, the construction is such that from three to four, in between three and four, uh, there is third and fourth plate, the hot fluid will flow. And now, like this, 
alternatively hot fluid and cold fluid will flow through alternative threads. What this will do is this will um, make an indirect contact between the cold fluid and the hot fluid. Definitely it is a recuperative type of uh, heat exchanger wherein uh, the two fluids are not coming in contact with each other. Instead they are maintaining an indirect contact and there is always a heat transfer from the hot fluid to the cold fluid and then from the hot fluid to the cold fluid then from the hot fluid to the next cold fluid and like this the hot fluid keeps on losing its heat to the next plate in between cold fluid. Like this a film of cold fluid is always maintained in alternative plates and a film of hot food fluid is always maintained between alternative plates and it goes on hits a block hits a solid block at the end solid block at the end wherein there are no holes and the liquid returns back in its own path again maintaining a flow of cold and hot fluid in alternative plates to ensure proper heat transfer. Now uh, to increase the turbulence and hence the convective heat transfer coefficient what is done is there are patterns there are patterns given in between the plates so it's like when these two plates when these two plates are stuck to each other it is stacking up to each other it's always a pattern of flow in between these um, two plates of the fluid which ensures a higher convective heat transfer uh, coefficient since the turbulence is high, when the turbulence is high, the heat transfer coefficient will always increase, obviously increase and more randomness is generated when, when you provide uh, uh, this, this uh, structural parts to the uh, engaging fluid, so the fluid keeps on losing more amount of heat. Uh, from itself. So always there is a pattern maintained uh, in the plates wherein the hot fluid or the cold fluid is flowing so that the turbulence of the fluids can be increased readily and the heat transfer can be increased readily. So these are the construction. Now in a plate heat exchanger these plates may seem to be very big when you see them separately or discreetly but when you put them in a stack and there are about uh, 140, 150 plates stacked up together it might just take up this much amount of space. I have seen industrial plate heat exchangers of this long uh, length and having 150 plates stacked up one after the other. This small is the thickness of the plates and this small is the gap in between the two plates wherein the fluid is allowed to flow. Since the number of plates uh, you see if we give more parts to the hot and cold fluid more we increase the number of plates more of the parts given to the hot and cold fluids to flow. So my first argument is that the number of plates if we decrease it the heat transfer area will decrease and hence the heat transfer will decrease is automatically justified if we use only three plates supposedly wherein cold fluid is flowing between two and three and hot fluid is flowing between one and two obviously the heat transfer will be lesser than if we use five or six plates wherein cold fluid and hot fluid are given multiple ways you know, or multiple uh, uh, plates to flow in to lose their heat. Now this source of hot fluid and cold fluid is only one. There are no multiple sources of hot fluid or cold fluid. This is one source which is coming through the holes from the plate heat exchangers as I have explained. So now let us examine this. What is exactly happening? What is exactly happening? Supposedly this is the hot fluid. This is the hot fluid my friends and this is the hot fluid coming in and this is the hot fluid going out, hot fluid out. So this is hot fluid in, this is hot fluid out. Similarly, cold fluid in, cold fluid in, cold fluid out automatically. Now what is happening is, let us understand this, let us understand this, very important. From this first zone, we are understanding that by the construction of the plate heat exchangers primarily, it will only allow the hot fluid to enter in between the plates. So, let us understand the construct, uh, construction of this. There is a gasket, there is a gasket around this particular hole and there is no gasket around this particular hole and the gasket is having uh, elevation above the flat plate. So what it does is when these two plates one and two, when these two plates one and two sticks to each other, these two holes having the elevated gaskets will seal back, will seal back and hence not allow the movement of any cold fluid 
in between plate 1 and 2. You understand this? Supposedly these are the two sections. These are the two sections. Supposedly these are the two sections, my two hands. What I'm doing is I am making an elevation of the hole here. I'm making an elevation of the hole here. So when I fix this, a gap remains here, here, but this is completely sealed. This is completely sealed, my friend. So supposedly this is a gasket, this is a gasket. It fits up here, but it leaves a gap here. So the fluid coming through this hole will enter, but the fluid coming through this hole or this hole will not enter the chamber. So the fluid only enters through one side, through one side of this uh, plate, particular plate, of alternative plates, the alternative sides. So automatically the hot fluid goes in from this side and comes from the bottom. Now, this is an interesting movement because the hot fluid will not only go here, it will push through and move on to the next plate. Now, in the next plate, as we know, this has a gasket now, elevated gasket, which fits us with the next plate. So automatically there is no gap in between two and three to allow the passage, to allow the passage of the hot fluid. Though the hot fluid is coming in, it will not go in between the plates. So hot fluid will not go and will move on to the next plate where it, again the cold fluid movement is blocked by an elevation, elevated gasket. These holes are sealed off. The no fluid will come in, come in through these holes and the hot fluid will again go in through this hole. So it will go through plate number one. It will go through plate number three, but it will never go through plate number two. Whereas the cold fluid will be blocked in plate number one, will be allowed in plate number two, will be allowed in plate number two because there is no gasket, there is a hole left and it will enter and exit through uh, this hole or will move on to the next one, move on to the next one, it gets two parts, it will move on to the next one, will not get an entry here, will move on to the next one and will move into the fourth plate. So second and fourth plate, cold fluid passes in and third and first plate, hot fluid passes in. So alternative plates, thus the construction is so simple by providing elevated gaskets, elevated rubber plates, in between two plates, we block the two holes and we maintain flow of fluid in the other two holes to maintain an alternative flow of hot fluid, fluid and cold fluid in the alternative plates. So this is what the concept is. Now, now let us rub this. I hope you understood the concept. Now, we understand, let me, uh, uh, let me give you a practical example that I was talking about. Uh, uh, what is, what will be the flow pattern of the fluids? Like, uh, how do you decide whether the hot fluid flows in from the top, like uh, hot fluid flows in from the top hole or hot fluid flows in from the bottom hole? Now, this is very important. This is very important, my friends. Let us understand this. Hot fluid generally anything that is hot, any, any liquid, liquid in particular, that is hot, it increases the randomness of the liquid and it increases the, uh, what do you call it, it decreases the density of the liquid. Since the randomness is increased, the density of the liquid decreases. Uh, but let it be so, the main judgment parameter of the flu, fluid flow is density. Why did I say this? In an industrial example, what happened is once I was walking and I realized that for acid water heat exchange, remember my friend, for acid water heat exchange, acid water heat exchange, what happened is water, water my friends was flowing from down. Water my friends was flowing from down and was leaving top. So water inlet was down. Water inlet was down. But and acid inlet as expected was from top for the next plate. So from top acid would come in, counter current heat exchange, acid inlet. But what is the density of acid? 1.86. What is, this is the specific gravity. And what is the specific gravity of water? 1 itself, 1. So which is lower in density? Water of course. But in another plate heat exchange arrangement wherein we are using oil and water, to heat exchange among oil and water in a fluid coupling, in a plated exchanger, fluid coupling plated exchanger. What we are doing is we are sending in water from the top, water from the top, and oil from the bottom, oil from the bottom. So let us forget the case of acid. Now we are entering water from the top and oil from the bottom in the next plated exchange, in leaving from the top. 
So oil, oil entering from bottom, leaving at the top, water entering from top and leaving at the bottom. Why is it so? Why has the pattern changed? Oil's density is 0 0.86 and specific gravity and water is one, so water is heavier than oil. Why is the pattern like this? It is, it is easier as we understand by the simpler concept, simple concept of uh, gravity and density, it is easier to lift a lower density fluid. Lower density fluid can be lifted as heavily, easily. So lower density fluid is easily lifted, has a tendency to go up or what would I say has an easier, it's easier to pump a uh, lower density liquid from a lower height to a higher height. Whereas it's difficult to pump a high density fluid. It's difficult to pump a high density fluid from a lower height to a higher height. So obviously the one with the lower density, the one with the lower density my friends will be preferred to be fed from the bottom. Now if two fluids have the same density and one is hot, one is cold. Same fluid, supposedly A, fluid A, one having higher density, one having lower density. Definitely you can intermix them if the fluids are same, but hot fluid will have uh, a lower density, so it will always be present from the bottom. We understand, or if supposedly A and B are two fluids, where B's density is lower than A, if B's density is lower than A, it is easier to pump B from top a low, lower hole to upper hole. So B will be sent from bottom to top and A will be sent from top to bottom. This is how the fluid pattern is. This is how the fluid is selected to be sent in alternative plates or alternative holes of heat plated exchanges. This is how a plated exchange works. Hot fluid, cold fluid, hot fluid, cold fluid, hot fluid, cold fluid. And how does it ensure that? By providing elevated gaskets to prevent the flow of hot fluid in alternative plates and to prevent the flow of cold fluids in alternative plates. And similarly, no gaskets are given to the other plates to allow the flow of hot fluid in alternative plates and to allow the flow of cold fluid in alternative plates. That I think will conclude the lecture for today. Plate exchangers are almost summed up the working principle and the practical example that I've already stated, low density and high density fluid, and why are plate exchangers preferred over other heat exchangers. I think uh, that will be it for today. We will be bringing more technical videos and more working principles of other equipments in our upcoming videos. If you want to uh, share our content, you may do so. And if you liked our content, like it, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.